the film theorist fairly odd parents broke its own rules let's go i wish for film theory to cross 20 million subscribers sorry matt they finished Can't at 12. What? Why? Listen, the wanted little farty noise thing, so it's against the rules. Uh, fine. I wish for a good Morbius movie. Nope, against rule 101. <laughs> I wish for another season of Gravity Falls? Nope, rule 3-15-4-5. Fine, you left me no choice. I'm just gonna have to prove that there are no rules, that they're all an elaborate conspiracy to keep stock image fairies like you in check. Say psych right now? I will not say psych right now, sir. Uh -oh. The rules That's are a lie. That's and threat. I'm about to prove it. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory. Ed Cross Fairy can't grant my wish for 20 million subscribers, but you can. Cast your magic on that subscribe button. You know, one of the classic Nicktoons that I always thought flew under the radar was the Fairly Odd Parents. Being alone with someone for a long time can get. Under the radar? I don't know, bruh. I feel like it was hella popular. I always thought flew under the radar was the Fairly Odd Parents. Being alone someone for a long time can get annoying if it's not the right person are you leaving me i thought you loved me this show was unhinged in all the best ways oops sorry dad oh don't worry about it timmy my dreams were shattered years ago how many years ago <laughs> how old are you and why not it's a show about a little boy <laughs> named timmy turner with two fairy godparents hey, that he grants his every wish sounds awesome finally every 10 year old's dream a room full of supermodels hey. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get all that. I suppose not every wish. You see, the fairy godparents do have some limitations on what wishes they can and can't grant, all yep. of which are outlined <clears throat> in a magical legal document known simply as the, the rules. In fact, the show goes to great lengths to explain the rigorous training that fairy godparents have to endure so that the rules never get broken. And that makes sense, right? Every magic system has to have rules. Three wishes yeah. for a genie, no wishing for more wishes, no making people fall in love. All the classic stuff. So the world of the Fairly Odd Parents shouldn't be that different, right? Right? Well, you know when I start asking <laughs> rhetorical questions like that, it's because the answer probably isn't as obvious as it seems. Yeah. Nope, loyal theorists, after watching the show, maybe a bit too intently for a children's cartoon, it's become clear to me that the hey. rules are- Hey, do you, can you blame them though? Because I was watching this when I was young. I didn't understand what the fuck they were saying. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time. The little jokes and stuff. I didn't know none of that. I bet you if I go back and watch all of them, I'll be like, damn. They really said that when I was like seven years old? Crazy. They're actually more like the big fat lies. Lies perpetuated by a muscle-bound guardian preparing the fairy world for war. Mm. Don't believe me? Grab your wands, your wings, and floaty crown things. It's time to wish for some answers. So first, let's set some context. What's exactly in the rules? According to the rules, fairy godparents only grant wishes to kids. As I just talked about, the rules are a collection of guidelines that determine what wishes a fairy godparent can and can't grant to their godkids. On the surface, a lot of the rules make perfect sense. Fairies can't grant a wish that intentionally kills or hurts someone. One. No yeah. wishes for money, no wishes that interfere with love, no wishes that help cheat in competitions, no wishes for anyone except the godchild. And above all else, a godchild must never ever reveal the existence of their fairies to anyone else. Otherwise, they're gonna lose their fairies, their memories, and reverse every wish they've ever Damn. had. It's a pretty harsh system, but then again, it seems sensible for upholding the structure of this magical world. Yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? Very valid uh rules, I guess you could say. We're told in the show Guidelines. that fairies' primary purpose is to bring joy, and the rules help prevent any wishes that might result in a net negative of joy. Plus, to help make sure that a god kid doesn't unintentionally break a rule, there are safeguards in place. The wish won't get granted, and instead Ew. the fairy's wand dims, wilts, and then makes a fart sound. I will prove my whimsy when I change you into a... In general, it seems safe to say that the rules are fundamental to fairy society, with the first rules having been drafted long ago by the council, four ancient and powerful fairies that rule over the fairy world. But the rules also seem to be a living document, with new rules getting added all the time. For yeah. instance, you cannot wish for every day to be Christmas, which got added after Timmy wished for exactly that, and things got messy in a hurry. Wow! They added a new rule! You really gotta mess up big time to make that happen. But the more you watch the show, the more <laughs> something feels off about the rules. Some of them are just nonsensical, <clears throat> like magic can't be used on invisible teachers, sleeping clowns, French New Wave filmmakers, and anyone who wears clear glasses as a fashion statement. It's certainly uh, weird, uh, for sure, but not it's fashion. not bad. Others are just simply inconvenient, like the fact that breakfast-related wishes are denied after 10.30 a.m. But then there are the rules that are just flat-out dangerous. For example, fairies must always attempt to grant the wishes of their godchildren, even if they just offhandedly say, Say, I wish. Doesn't even matter if they're conscious or not. Wish, go, Vicky. <gasps> 
On top of that, there are these massive loopholes into rules that Timmy often demonstrates throughout the show. Jorgen said whatever's in the book is a rule, so... Timmy, Timmy, you have to follow any of the rules. This then becomes if a huge nest. problem in one episode, with Timmy making all sorts of rule-breaking wishes for money <clears> to win <throat> multiple reality show competitions and for his crush to fall in love with him. He later writes that no fairy godkids have to follow the rules either. Ah, uh, yo, you is... You, 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 you're asking for it, Timmy, all right? Simmer down, buddy. How about you worry about yourself and, and wish for yourself? You know what I'm saying? I get you trying to be a good, a good person, trying to show the love, show the love, and spread the rule amongst others. But bro, get done, okay? You're asking for disaster. And for his crush to fall in love with him. He later writes that no fairy god kids have About to follow the rules either, thereby causing the rules to almost self destruct and destroy the entire universe. Every rule free wish destabilizes the book further. If the book explodes, got nothing. so does the universe. It's uh, pretty horrifying, right? So the rules then are clearly responsible for holding together the fabric of reality. And yet, yep. that just flat out isn't true. See, magic and wish granting aren't powers that are exclusive to fairies in this world. And throughout the series, we see other magical creatures completely ignore basic basic fundamental principles. Take for instance the anti-fairies, who are all about causing bad luck and pain in ways that break the rules. There are also genies who basically don't follow any rules. Even their limit on three wishes isn't real. And I can't use my last wish to wish for more witches, can I? We tell everyone they can't, but really you can. Some humans have also gained the ability to wield magic, like the wizard Merlin, and all he uses his powers for is to help his nephew Arthur win competitions and become royalty, a direct violation of the rule against cheating. I've already cast a spell, the next moment the Yanks' sword is gonna be the king of England! Then there are the Pixies, who are just as magical as the fairies, but treat magic as a business. All of oh. their wish granting is seen as transactional, with bureaucratic yep. rules <clears throat> and red tape that controls everything. And yet, just like any good corrupt businessman, the powerful ones aren't above bending and breaking their own rules to get ahead. During a mini-golf competition that's subject to important contractual obligations, several Pixies break the rules and cheat to help the head Pixie I remember win. that shit, yeah. Pixies are cheating! And yet, despite all of this rule breaking, the universe stays intact. But okay, maybe that's just other creatures breaking the rules. Maybe fairies operate by a different form of logic or a different code of magic. Maybe their magic is different and disconnected from the rest. Well, that's not true either. First of all, Timmy and his fairies break the rules all the time to the point where we could literally be here all day if I just wanted to list out examples. Just for the sake of showing some work, here are a few. Hell yeah, bro. How many fucking seasons of Timmy Turner did they have, bro? Like, there, there was so much, so many episodes. Out, Timmy wishes his parents couldn't care less about him, violating the rule against interfering with love. In I Dream of Cosmo, Cosmo hits his head and briefly believes that he's become a weenie. Uh, that's part witch, part genie. He proceeds then to grant several rule-breaking wishes to Timmy's dad, including wishing for money, thereby breaking the rule on counterfeiting. The rule against cheating in competitions? Yeah, that one's basically broken every other episode, like in Foul Bald, Superbike, yeah. Movie Magic, just to name a few. That last one actually is my favorite example of rule-breaking because Cosmo literally rips a page out of his copy of the rules that forbids him from helping Timmy, thereby implying that fairies can basically ignore any rule if they so choose. But perhaps yeah. the most egregious example of breaking the rules is mentioned in Hassle in the Castle, when it's revealed that Cosmo and Wanda's most infamous former god kid abused our magic, took out Archduke Ferdinand, and plunged the world into World War One. Yeah, uh, even without wishing directly for the death of the Archduke, World War One caused 20 million deaths and 21 million injuries. I would say that Damn. that one caused a net negative of joy. So, Something suspicious is going on with these rules. These things are supposedly Damn. super important, unbreakable, potentially world-ending, and yet they're broken all the time. Therefore, they're a lie. I've proven my thesis. Film theory becomes film fact. Thanks, everyone. Let's wrap it early. Slap a dark truth and big old red text on a thumbnail and ship it. Well, not quite. Sure, at this point, we've proven that the rules are full of lies and you can break them pretty much whenever you want, but we're still left with one major question. Why? If these things aren't real and they're not being enforced consistently, then why are they here at all? It can't possibly be because it's a cartoon for children and breaking the rules would make for easily manufactured drama. No. No, that's not it. See, the more I kept watching and digging into the hey, lore yo. of the series, everything started I remember to go back to one person. The one magical creature in control of both the rules and the fairy world writ large, Jorgen von Strangle. Self-proclaimed toughest fairy in the universe. I am Drill Sergeant Jorgen von Strangle, and these are my muscles. Oh, yeah. Jorgen is a main hey, supporting yo. character in the series, the guardian of the rules. Not even the Crimson Chin can do that shit. 
Dion. Morgan is a major supporting character in the series, the guardian of the rules who knows him by heart so he can properly enforce them. He's also in charge of training fairies at his fairy academy boot camp, as well as assigning godparents to new god kids who need joy in their life. Basically, he's the fairy general of the fairy army. I will send you back to the fairy academy for 1,000 years of training! But if he's such a pro of the fairy world, why is he propping up this book of lies? Well, everything starts to click into place thanks to two episodes. First, there's Schools Out the Musical, where the Pixies attempt to take over the fairy world. Remember these guys? They're the magical creatures that are obsessed with destroying joy and yeah. whimsy and replacing it with contracts, oh boredom, God, and bro. rule. This episode was low-key depressing, boy. <clears throat> it's, like, it's like... It's like you see it nowadays in the real life, bro. You got... You know what I'm saying? You got the... McDonald's turning all like fucking grayish and shit when back in the day it was red and yellow you feel me they had the little playgrounds now they took that down to expand the 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 dining room to eat and shit you know what I'm saying like as we see it in real life too it's crazy popping up this book of lies well everything starts to click into place thanks to two episodes first there's schools out the musical where the pixies attempt to take over the fairy world remember these guys they're the magical creatures this. that are obsessed with destroying joy and women Look, all that colorful ass sign. Easy and replacing it with McDonald's grayish shit. You know what I'm saying? Contracts, boredom, and rules. Yeah, it's crazy. A bit suspicious, isn't it? In this episode, the Pixies find a sad infant clown named Flappy Bob, and they have <coughs> a 37-year anti-fun plan, acting Bruh. as Flappy Bob's own godparents for decades. But instead of granting him every wish for clownish fun, they mold him into a boring Harvard law-educated businessman. Meanwhile, the Pixies trick Timmy into wishing that kids were in charge of the Earth in retaliation against all their rules and laws. But here's a problem: with kids now in charge, every fairy godparent is pulled back into fairy world because the kids no longer need them. According Damn. to the rules, fairies can only be assigned to children in need. And the rules Damn. also state that if pixies are the last magical creatures on Earth, they're granted control over the planet, which is exactly what happens. Has to be one of the worst case scenarios for the fairies, who basically own- That's tough, gang. That is crazy, bro. Just colorful, straight to just bland, gray, boring shit, bro. Which is exactly what happens. <laughs> Has to be one of the worst case scenarios for the fairies, who basically only exist to bring joy to others. We're just enjoying the show. Your misery is like going to the movies for us. This sequence of events raises a ton of Bruh. questions. If fairies are kicked off the earth if kids are suddenly in charge, why isn't wishing for that something that's explicitly listed in the rules? Meanwhile, all of this happened only because Flappy Bob was never granted a fairy godparent. Clearly, he was miserable during his childhood, and yet he got a pixie for some reason. <laughs> Right. Sanderson, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful new 37-year plan. Why? Timmy was assigned Cosmo and Wanda because he didn't want to do chores. I think an orphaned clown having the circus pummeled out of him, it might be just a little bit higher on the priority list. Yeah, Most importantly, fags, though, bro. Fags, like, like, why? Because he, he's an orphan or something? Like, why? Circus pummeled out of him, it might be just a little bit higher on the priority list. Most importantly of all, though, how did Jorgen not see any of this coming? Remember, Jorgen is the custodian of the rules. He knows them inside and out, and yet he does basically nothing hundreds to know. of times that we see him getting broken throughout the show. And as the trainer and assigner of new godparents, he should have known how miserable Flappy Bob was during his childhood and done something about it. Jorgen also isn't surprised when the Pixies reference that obscure loophole that gives him control of Earth in the rules, so he clearly knows that it exists. Let us go! Timmy needs us! No, he does not. According to the rules, fairies can only be assigned to children in need. And as the guardian of the master copy of the rules, he's one of the only people. Oh boy, this man playing both sides, huh? This man playing both sides for over. That's what I'm getting. You're not saying you fucking sus ass. And as the guardian of the master copy of the rules, he's one of the only people who can change them as he pleases. So yep. this should have been something that he rectified well before it became a problem. So why didn't he? Why is Jorgen lying <clears throat> about the rules? Well, Jorgen didn't stop Pinocchio this precisely headass. because he did see it coming. He wanted this to happen. Yep. He wanted the fairies pulled back into the fairy world. It's all part of a larger plan. At first, I thought that maybe Jorgen wasn't sides, actually bro. a fairy, but instead some sort of undercover pixie on the inside. I mean, yeah. he loves rules and enforcing them, just like the pixies. Now we're pulling, pulling, pulling back the fairies so I can bring them pain. But ah, yeah, yeah, that boy, deaf, undercover, good man, boy, fuck is you talk about? We learned 
definitively in the season 7 episode Cosmo rules that he's actually Cosmo's cousin, thereby proving that he's a fairy. Say hello to your other, more deep, dark family secretish cousin, Cosmo! Cousins! No! Uh. So what then is his deal? Well, it all comes down to that second episode I mentioned earlier and then left unexplained until now for dramatic effect. You see, the last piece of the puzzle that brings everything together is the season 6 finale, Wishology. Here, season we learned that the fairies weren't always the sweet, cute, cuddly <coughs> creatures that we know of today. In ancient fairy times, a fairy's main job was to fight, not frolic. Basically, fairies were once a race of super soldiers at war with a force known as the Darkness, which was only defeated when thousands of fairy warriors combined their powers to create a neutralizing light. And even then, the fairy council prophesied that the darkness would one day return. They sent millions of the strongest fairy warriors out into the void of space to create an early warning system for fairy world, should the darkness ever return. According to yeah. the lore of the series, that's exactly why there are stars in the sky. All those stars, they're fairies on the lookout. Now, that's a cool story and all, but just think about its implications. Fairy world must have been devastated by this war with the darkness if millions of them were sent into space at the end of the fighting just to be a warning system. That's not even thinking about how many died during combat. Their population has clearly dwindled to a point where the entirety of fairy world can fit inside of a gumball machine. Every fairy in fairy world must be in here! And it's not like fairies reproduce quickly either. In Fairly Odd Baby, Fact. Cosmo and Wanda's child Poof is born, and we learn that the last fairy child born before Poof was Cosmo himself. It all started when the last fairy huh? was born in fairy world. The fuck? And yet, in the Past and the Furious, we meet Cosmo and Wanda's very first godchild, the caveman credited with inventing the wheel. That means that, at minimum, another new fairy hasn't been born since at least the Paleolithic era 40,000 years ago. Even the fairy economy seems to be suffering, unable to fill Why positions take that in long? public services like law enforcement. Isn't there supposed to be a good cop and a bad cop? We had some cutbacks. And so Jorgen did what he thought he needed to do. He created a sham system that would eventually result in kids losing their fairies, and those fairies then having to return to the fairy world. World. For centuries, he's been tweaking the rules, trying to create a situation where the god kids of Earth mess up so badly that the godparents have no choice but to abandon them. That's why he allowed the pixies to exploit the loophole. After kids become the dominant species on Earth, he's happy to pull all those fairies back to fairy world. In the episode, we see him being put to work in real jobs that can help rebuild their infrastructure. He wants the fairies back to rebuild their population. Remember, before Poof, Cosmo was the last fairy child born, and he's older than the entirety of human civilization. In short, when humans came into being, production of new fairies stopped. And without the need to train godparents, there's a perfect excuse to turn the fairy academy into an actual fairy army boot camp. Jorgen knows that the darkness Damn. is going to return, and he's been spending his entire life preparing for it. That's why his physique is so much more like the fairy warriors of old, and why he immediately takes charge of the entire fairy world when the darkness... And what happened to the other ones? Because we, we just keep seeing him. You know what I'm saying? What happened to the other ones? Much more like the fairy warriors of old. Like all these people, right? <clears throat> old, and why he immediately takes charge of the entire fairy world when the darkness returns, sending all the other fairies to be protected in a gumball machine as he tries his best to fight back. He begrudgingly teams up with Timmy, someone he loathes. He even sacrifices himself to make sure that Timmy can save the fairy world. That is his primary goal, no matter the cost. And here's the thing, his plan seems to work. Timmy is able to dispel the darkness by showing it love, thereby turning it towards kindness. And towards the end of the series, mm. we learn that there's a shortage of fairy godparents, partially because fairies have begun pursuing careers You're within fairy saying. world. Due to overwhelming demand and fairies taking on better paying jobs there is a fairy godparent shortage that said jorgen's plan didn't work well enough he still had to suffer through all those episodes with the dog fairy what do you want me to say i know a lot of words because i just ate a dictionary but hey that's that's a dog fairy is so ass bro look at that shit who the fuck wants that everybody wants a cosmo and wanda bro what do you want me to say I know a, a lot of words because I just ate a dictionary. But hey, if you want something that breaks the rules of our world, you should check out our sponsor for today's episode, Air Up, the bottle that'll completely change the way you drink. Oh man, book of lies. That boy was playing both sides, gang. You're not saying. First th thought before watching the video, his kid is binge watching Fairly Odd Parents, and this is how Matt Pat is staying sane. I'm actually surprised that Matt Pat didn't an entire episode about the rules and at no point did he mention that timmy is actually like 50 years old and actually wish for everyone to be perpetually the same age what no way he's 50 years old what the fuck ain't no fucking ain't no way he's 50 years old 
To me, unfair is because his parents are borderline abusive. They lied to him, saying they were abandoning him to get him a home, to get a home video of him crying. So he called Vicky and ended up with an abusive babysitter. So I think it goes deeper than him just not wanting to do chores. It definitely does go deeper than that because I feel like I remember an episode where I think Vicky was in it and he was just like, he was not having it, bro. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? So it definitely goes deeper than just him not wanting to do chores for sure. Uh, I love how they can't wish to hurt anyone, but in one episode, Wanda Straight uses her magic to throw Timmy's bully into a locker repeatedly. <laughs> hey, man, it's just... Bending the rules, there's loopholes to everything, you know what I'm saying? Y'all be careful out here, boy. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what you guys thought. That's my reaction. If y'all enjoyed this video, like, subscribe if you haven't. And I'm out.